everyone. Thank you for checking out my YouTube channel today, The Study of Antiquity and the Middle Ages. I'm your host, as always, Nick Barksdale, and today we are joined by a very special guest, Dr. Mayer. Dr. Mayer, thank you so much for coming on today. My pleasure. Great to be here. And so, now that we've covered the origin of the Philistines, we've talked about their diet, we've talked about the complexity of their identity and how that changed over time, let's dive in and learn a little bit more. So let's talk Philistine society. Another subscriber, White, asked, if you could clarify, what do we know about Philistine societal structure? Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, first of all, we don't know a lot. Let's start by that. Um, what we do know is that the, both the biblical text and, and apparently in one or two um, inscriptions, there's mention of the higher levels of, uh, of the Philistine um, society, and that's the king, or sometimes it's in the biblical text it's called the seren. Now, seren is a very interesting term. This was for many, many years uh, one of the examples of how they said the Philistines are connected to the Greeks because Seren was seen to be similar to Tyrannos, a tyrant. And then here you have tyrants in Greek uh, political structure. You have, you, have, you have tyrants in Philistine. There they go. Problem is, is one, tyrants are a much later uh, phenomenon in Greek um, culture. You don't, have, uh, you don't have it in the Bronze Age uh, uh, Mycenaean texts. So it's not a term from the, from the Bronze Age um, uh, Mycenaean political structure. And the other thing is, um, uh, it's been pointed out that it's probably a, um, a not a Mycenaean word, but probably a Luwian word from, from, um, uh, from the Luwian culture of, of, uh, of ancient Anatolia. So that's, that, that's one thing. The other thing is, um, one of the big questions is what does this represent besides that? The fact that we had a, we have the um, a leader called either a king or a, a seren, what's underneath it? Not only that, is what's the relationship between the various cities? So um, sometimes, particularly in the biblical texts, it's, it's, uh, uh, it's shown that the Philistines had some sort of a unity between the cities and they, and they, they work together in some sort of a Pentopolis. I mean, the five cities were separate, but had some uni uniform, you know, uh, um, political uh, connection. We really don't know that. We simply don't have texts that can tell us about this. So it's not clear. Um, uh, was each city separate, or was it, or were they connected to the other ones? And on the one hand, there is a lot of connection in the material culture between the various Philistine cities, but there's also clear differences. Uh, and we see, for example, that. When one Philistine city is big, the other goes down. So it's not all uh, hunky-dory, you know, and I'm sure there was also competition between the Philistine cities themselves. So that's the, at the high level. At levels below that, we have such minimal written evidence, both from the Philistines and from the, uh, even from the biblical text, that it's hard to say. Um, uh, for example, one of the things that you get from reading the biblical text is you think that the Philistines are this group of militant barbarians with a, with a knife in their, between their teeth. And they're, besides the fact that they're stronger and more sophisticated than the Israelites, that they're, they're militarily dominant. And um, recently I wrote an article in which I went over and all the material remains from the Philistines over the last 150 years, anything related to, to warfare and weapons, etc., and there wasn't a lot. So I'm not saying that, you know, they, the Philistines weren't um, tree-hugging, uh, save-the-whale uh, people. They were, you know, as militant as, you know, anybody was, but they weren't necessarily this, um, this um, militant martial um, image that the Bible portrays them as. Um, and so I would say that who they were, they probably, like many, many uh, Middle Eastern societies, were comprised of a, of a leader um, who had, uh, you know, had some sort of charismatic uh, control over other smaller groups, you know, with their leaders and, and, and the farmers and the, and the, and the, um, the, the soldiers, etc. You know, it was a, like we know from many, many, um, you know, ancient Near Eastern societies. Um, they weren't organized into some large empire like the Assyrians or the Babylonians or the, um, or the Egyptians, 
they probably were more similar to the various small um, local kingdoms that we have in the Iron Age Levant, the, um, the, the various Phoenician uh, um, city-states, the, the Isra Israelite and Judea kingdom, the Moabites, the Edomites, the, Mo um, the, um, uh, the Ammonites, and the various Aramean kingdoms in, in Syria. So that's probably the model that we should look for. And, and it would be great to find a source of uh, more writing from the Philistines, which would give us a little more detail, but we simply don't have that range.